Okay, we're back on here on our third little segment of our fall kickoff training. So um, we had talked about on the last one of getting excited and sharing Wild Tree, and then we mentioned like that three second commercial. I just looked back at my notes from last weekend, and Mandy had a really, I really liked hers. Um, she said, we're, we're an organic meal solution company, and we help busy people get dinner on the table, get, or get healthy dinner on the table, or healthy meals on the table. But I like that, organic meal solutions company, and we help busy people get dinner to the table, basically. Because um, that kind of sounds like, ooh, tell me more. You know what I mean? It sounds pretty good. I like that organic meal solutions company. I just have to like say that over and over so I get that in my, in my brain. Um, she also talked about like, we're launching, I'm launching an organic food company. Um, and we're all about, you know, helping people with different meal solutions. So those are just some different words that you can kind of incorporate with everything and come up with what, you know, what feels comfortable for you to say. I feel like everybody kind of has their own words that are comfortable to say. And sometimes when you say someone else's words, they don't, they don't feel like your words coming out of your mouth. So I think it's just, just come up with it and practice. Um, okay. I'm actually going to. I'm going to talk about recruiting before we move on to the next segment. We're going to keep recruiting almost in that excitement phase of our prosperity circle because, um, um, well, I mean, it is an action step, but it's also a mindset and stuff too. So recruiting is really fun for me. That at first was a really scary part because I looked at it wrong. I think, I, I mean, I think I was like, I don't know. The word recruiting sounds a little bit weird and it still kind of does to me, but it is what it is. That's what we call it. So we'll just stick with that. Um, I need to do another drawing in a minute too. But when I changed my mindset about recruiting and realized what a huge blessing Wild Tree has been to my personal life and, um, and thought of it as more like sharing a gift with people, it was a real mind shift. And then looking at from, from the perspective of, um, you know, if it's not for them, it's okay. Like, it's not like you're like disconnecting yourself from the outcome to me was a game changer. When somebody, somebody told that at a training event or something, it was like, take yourself out of the equation altogether. Even though you need a certain number of recruits to earn the trip, you need a certain number of recruits to become team members or I mean to, to promote to team leader and then you need a certain number of them to promote to team leader to promote to directory. I mean, they, of course it's tied to your personal success in your business, but it all boils down to a numbers game. At the end of the day, it's the more people you talk to, you're going to find the ones who are interested. And um, it's not about convincing them. It's about figuring out what could be a benefit in their life and then helping them with that. So, um, I'm going to pause and I'm going to do a drawing for another prize here. So the winner, Diane. Yay. The winner, 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 chicken dinner. Um, okay. Diane gets a cute little uh, chalkboard easel and she can take this to her parties and write. This is the idea is to have your hostess download the app with your code. Um, mm -hmm. your code and then she'll get a referral code that she can share with her guests and her friends so if you write um, your hostess's referral code on this chalkboard and just have it standing up at the party then that way her guests can when it's convenient for them they can download the app and get her code or you know if nothing else they can take a picture of it with their phone and when they get home they can download the app and and put her code in because um, you know it takes a little bit of time you download the app you wait for it to download then you have to set up your little account. It doesn't take that long, but at parties, sometimes it feels like there's not time. So this will be great to just put the hostess's code on and then, um, Cute. She'll be excited. Yeah. Is she still there? She is. My, my sister is meeting her right now. So mm. she's in the other room. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um, don't worry. Everybody will win a prize. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's like, Oh yeah. If you're on your soccer team, everybody gets a trophy. <laughs> That's what my mom taught me. <laughs> um, okay. So anyways, that was fun. Um, I actually, I'm going to, I'm going to post this for you guys afterwards. So you'll have a little handout on these tips, but I think sometimes it's good to write them down too. Like you hear them, you write them down and then, and then I'll give you a little um, sheet that you have on hand also. So think about recruiting. Um, so this next topic is I'm going to talk about recruiting for a few minutes and um, in your business, you can make a certain amount of money by 
doing parties. Like there's how, I mean, basically, I mean, ultimately you could do seven parties a week. Maybe you could do more, I guess, if you're stay at home. I mean, but, but you only have so many hours in the day that you physically can go out and do parties and nobody, no, none of us are going to do seven or even six or five. Probably I did four last week and that was, that was a lot of parties in one week. So, um, we, I mean, we have a certain amount of time that we feel most of us it's two, two days a week, you know, that we want to do parties and that's kind of considered almost like basically full time with wild tree is two parties a week. So, um, the only way to make more money than what you're going to make off your two parties a week is to start recruiting. And that's how you can really build wealth in a, in a business like this. So I, um, I finally had that shift on my team or in my business, I should say, where, where my commission check is actually more from my team members than my own personal um, time spent outside of the house. And if anybody knows me, you know the amount of time I put into my team. It's not free money, but I love, I love it because I get to help other people realize their goals, you know, and dreams and help them be successful in their business too and build those relationships. So, um, so think of recruiting as like, you're helping other people and you're offering a gift that you love, you know, and so number one, my, my biggest recruiting tip is have genuine belief, passion, and excitement about Wild Tree. And people, Karen's a prime example. I mean, she is so excited and so genuine about it. It literally attracts people. I'm not, I'm not into the, too much of the weird energy stuff, but it, but it is true. <laughs> like, I mean, you have like positive energy. It's, it is a thing, you know what I mean? You're not necessarily... I don't know about all that attracting things, but, um, but more like people are attracted to genuine excited people. I mean, that's just you. It's like, I want some of what she has. I even do a little text to Karen sometimes and say, <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you a while. I need a little dose of Karen, you know? And so, um, so it's like sharing that, um, just being excited and passionate and genuine people see that and they love that. And all three of you said, you know, sales isn't necessarily your thing. And sales isn't necessarily my thing either. I just love people and I want to be with people. I'm outgoing and excited, but I'm really, really passionate about what I do. I mean, I just am excited every day to wake up and do my job. And I never thought that was a thing. I mean, I didn't even really want a job, to be honest. I wanted to, you know, just volunteer in the classroom and make crafts and cook and decorate my house. So, um, so here I am, like super excited to wake up in the morning and, and do my job, which I think is a huge blessing. Um, so that was my number one tip is I have a kind of like a list of 12 things. So genuine belief, passion, and excitement. Um, number two, I already mentioned, just realize that you're offering a gift to someone, you know, and think of it as like you're offering them a gift and it's their choice if they want to accept it or not. It's not, it's not your choice to necessarily convince them. You can just answer their questions and figure out if it's right for them. Um, Number three, I also already said, is detach yourself from the outcome. So it's not about you. If, you. if you take yourself out of the equation, you will never be a pushy person because you're always, it's always about them and what's the best solution for them. And I think all of us care about not being pushy and wanting, you know, just wanting people to want to be around us, not run the other direction if they see us, right? Because you guys know those type of people who you're like, oh my gosh, they're coming, like, <laughs> They're going to try to sell me something again. I'm like running the other way. Like we don't want to be that person at all. Um, so um, number four, it's a numbers game. Like I said, it's just, it boils down to however many people you talk to. If you have business opportunity conversations with 10 people, one out of 10 should join your team. I mean, that's the statistics. So you have to be in front of enough people and that's worth doing the two parties a week. Um, and getting your attendance up at your parties is also a really good thing. And we'll talk about host coaching a little bit so you can learn some, some tips on how to do that. But it really is a numbers game. Oh, good. I didn't know if I pushed record. I was just double checking that. Um, okay. And then number five, offer your hostesses. Like always talk to your hostess about the business opportunity because your hostesses, um, I mean, that's Karen and I. I mean, we had a conversation. I actually had two parties that day. So I was leaving Karen's house to go do another party. And we were talking about it while I was in my car 
you know, in her driveway. And I was like pulling out a slip from my demo folder, like, here, just take this. It's only $49.95. You know, it was $49.95 then when she signed up. Um, but $129 is still super inexpensive, good deal. Um, check it out. Like, we could talk more, you know, whatever. But she was a hostess. Um, and honestly, talking to your hostesses about the business, those are going to be your number one recruits for the most part. And then obviously the people who attend your parties. Um, so what I like to do with my hostesses, I'm not a hundred percent consistent with this and I would like to be a hundred percent consistent because I think it's a really good recruiting tool is offer your hostesses three options. Um, so basically you know, when they book the party, it's a really good idea to have a conversation with them. Um, like after they book the party. So, say you booked, you came to a party on Monday night and booked a party. It's a really good idea to call them within the next 48 hours. The next day is really great, um, to follow up with them. It's pretty easy to follow up with the people who said they want to book a party. I mean, that should be, you know, kind of at the top of your list. If someone's interested in the business that should be at the very top of your list. And then the bookings would be next. But, um, but she booked a party. She's really excited about her party. Have a conversation with her on the phone. Just send a text. Hey, do you have a few minutes that we could talk on the phone? And then talk about, um, you know, I know you booked a party on such and such a day. I'm super excited. I just wanted to let you know the different options that are available to you. One option is I can come and do your party just like we're planning. I'll be the rep. You'll be the hostess. You'll get host credit. I'll take the bookings and commissions and I'll go on my way. And, you know, that's what we're already planning to do. Another option is actually for, for you to, um, for you to be the rep. I don't know if you've considered the business opportunity with wild tree, but this, you already have a party booked. This party could be your party. Um, it could be your first party for your business. Um, I would help train you. You would have the opportunity to come shadow me at my parties and, you know, learn what you need to do for your party. And I can promise that I'll have you ready to go for your party. I mean, everybody's first party, they're a little nervous, but, um, but I'll have you ready to go with what you need. Um, if you're interested in having this party be your first party. And then the third option would be, we could use your, if you're kind of like, not sure about what you want to do, but you have a little bit of interest, we could use your party as a decision party. And so I could come and do your party as the rep. And if you're like, gosh, I don't know. My friends are pretty excited about this and, <clears throat> um, it would be kind of fun to give it a try. Then the bookings at your party could be yours. And, and so I, you know, your friends would be booking parties. I would just give those bookings to you and then you would have those bookings to start your business. So which option sounds good to you? And it's really like, I mean, they've already chosen the first option. Like you already know you've given them a hundred percent out. Like if they are like, no, I'm good with just hosting and having you be the rep, fine, moving on, you know, but it's, again, it's a numbers game. So if you have that conversation with every single hostess, you're going to get recruits, you know what I mean? At some point in time. Um, so when I learned that at a, at a leadership conference a couple of years ago and it was like, Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Something else to keep in mind with that conversation. Sometimes to be honest, I don't necessarily have that conversation the day after the party that they booked it at. I usually have that conversation once they've generated some interest with their friends. So like you're going to have the conversation to get their party set up. Um, if they indicated a little bit of interest in the business on that survey sheet, you know, so they booked a party and maybe they indicated some interest in the business. You might offer those three options right away when you're doing that follow-up call. But otherwise I sometimes like to wait a little bit till they have some people like, Oh yeah, I already have like, you're checking in with them. How's your inviting going? I already have three people super excited and they have friends that, that they want to invite because this is like exactly what they were looking for. That might be a really good time to say, Hey, do you have a few minutes to talk? Because most of your conversation is probably going to happen through texting, but I can tell you a recruiting conversation won't happen through text. Like you have to have a voice to voice conversation when you're recruiting people because there's just no way to gauge emotion. And I don't know, you just need to be able to have that real true conversation. Um, so, so keep that in mind as a recruiting tool. It's really, really great. And I feel like, again, you're just offering that gift to the hostess. Like, Hey, I offer this to all my hostesses. Just want to make sure you knew the options that are available to you, that type of thing. Um, so that was number five hostesses, three options. Number six, um, this is really great too for Kelly and Amy, um, for you guys, because you're just getting started. So you might be like, Hey, I would like for November to be my first month team leader qualifications. I don't want to wait around to ask hostesses 
to, to join my team, but they're not even going to be joining until after their party takes place. And then they're going to get those bookings because that's probably not going to give you a bonus qualified, you know, rep on your team for November. So this next tip, number six is use the words. I thought of you because Mandy told me this. Um, she called me, I don't know, my second month in the business, I thought it was like, oh my gosh, my director just called me on the phone. <laughs> it was like a movie star called me or something. Totally made my day. But we had a really nice conversation and she said, you know, and maybe I was like not sure about recruiting because that's yeah. a typical thing to be a little bit nervous about in the mm -hmm. beginning of your business Tell you recruit more mm -hmm. people and then you get a lot more comfortable with it. So always keep that in mind. But she said, you know, if you like, use the words I thought of you because and you're really genuine and sincere with that person, it feels really comfortable to have that conversation because otherwise you're like, how do I even start the conversation with somebody about the business opportunity? But if you say like, hey, Sally, you know, I just joined this awesome organic meal solutions company and I thought of you right away because um, I know that healthy eating is really important to you guys in your, in your family. Or, um, I mean, if you know a health coach, I know you said you're a health coach, Amy, but um, if you know other health coaches, that would be right in line. I mean, they're helping people, you know, with, with um, meal solutions. If you, um, I don't know, um, Kelly, you might still know, I know that our kids have, have graduated, but maybe, um, maybe you're still involved with some dance moms that maybe still even have kids at the studio or you, you're working full time too. So you're around busy people. So, you know, I thought of you because I know you're really busy. And when you don't get home from work until 530 at night, dinner time, like for me is a struggle. Cause I'm kind of in the same boat. You know, you, this is Kelly having this conversation, but, um, but I just, I thought you might be interested in this new organic meal solutions company that I just became a part of. It's really helped me with having healthy meals on the, on the dinner table after a busy night at work, you know? Um, and then same for, for Karen. I mean, you've got your teachers and yeah. you swim team, um, people and all that stuff too. So, so that to me makes a really, really easy way to, it's simple, but it's so helpful to have those words and just really personalize your conversation. Um, the seventh tip is ask for referrals. Who do you know who, you know, is looking for um, an opportunity, you know, for a different stream of income? Like it could be an extra stream of income or um, maybe they're like, I, I, it could even just be like, do you have anybody in mind that you think this could be a good fit for? And they might come up with the ideas of, yeah. I mean, I've, I've been asking for referrals lately and it's amazing how people think of other people like, Oh my gosh, I, um, one example is my daughter's friend graduated Emma, you know, Emma, um, Kelly from university. And so I was there with Ali Corey, she was choreographing in Walla Walla and, um, she's a school teacher and she said, Oh my gosh, I told my friend I work with about wild tree. She just had a baby and she went back to work as a teacher. And she's like, she is so sad. She's like crying every day on her way to school. She does not want to leave her baby. She said, so I told her because she was like not into the makeup thing, not into the um, shakes and this and that, that there's a lot of different businesses out there and stuff. It was like, that just wasn't her thing. And sales really wasn't her thing, but she wants to stay home with her baby so bad. So she's like, I, I told her about Wild Tree. It could be a good fit. So that's an example of like a referral. So if you're kind of always using that, that language of um, you know, if you know anybody and I've been giving like a sweet treat as a thank you for a referral. So I send them a chocolate mousse, um, you know, just an order like of the chocolate mousse in the mail, um, as a thank you for, for their referral, you know, or whatever. So I have just, I've done that a couple of times cause I've kind of started that new thing, but referrals are huge. I mean, you never know, like that is a great, great way to get out of your circle of people really fast is to ask for referrals. Um, so number eight for recruiting is to be planting re recruiting seeds throughout your demo. So you're not just waiting for like one moment that you're going to mention it and that's your recruiting moment. It's like you want to be planting seeds by telling your brief story and what, you know, why you wild tree. And then we're going to go through the demo. So we'll just be going through that in more detail in a little bit, but just keep that in mind um, about, you know, just planting seeds throughout the course of your demo. Um, number nine is customer care surveys. So I'll show you mine. Well, everybody's probably seen mine, but, um, in case somebody's hopping on that hasn't been to one of my parties. Well, and Kelly hasn't actually been to any 
parties before she signed up as a rep. She just, um, she had bought stuff from me and loved making the meals and stuff too. So keep, I mean, think about that too. Kelly, Kelly's never even been to one of my wild tree parties. So that was just, she loved the meals and I was just like, Hey Kelly, you know, have you ever thought about doing this? Like we just had a really genuine, we have really long, good conversations, right? Like we're on the phone for like two hours visiting and catching up. Um, but you know, it's the same thing. I just thought, gosh, this would be super fun. And it would be fun to get to work together even after our kids aren't in college together, you know, down the road too. And so, um, so that was just, that was a recruiting conversation, but it wasn't any strings attached. It was just, maybe this would be fun for you and stuff. So anyways, these surveys, um, is everybody, everybody knows about these, right? Do you know, you know about these, right, Kelly? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm just making sure. Yeah. Okay, so these you print from the MRC, uh, the Media Resource Center. You just can type in customer care survey. I like, I print mine always on color. So I have some green, some pink, some yellow, whatever color. But I really like them to stand out. Like they are like gold. So no matter what, in my messy office or anywhere, I always can pick these out, you know, amongst the order forms and different stuff that you have from the party. So I don't know. I think it makes a difference having them in color. But those are huge. So number nine was customer care surveys. That is where people can indicate their interest in the business opportunity. Just because they put a one or zero or whatever the lowest number is on your survey um, does not mean they're not interested. But certainly if they put anything a three or above, maybe even a two, like it's basically if they put anything besides a one, they have some interest. And people can be a little bit shy about expressing their interest. I don't know how come, but they just can be. So it's always good to um, try to have some follow-up conversations with them. And we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about follow-up at the end of our training. So, um, well, that brings me to number 10. Number 10 tip is follow-up appointments. So if you have someone who marks any sort of interest about the business opportunity on this survey, this is what I do at checkout. Um, we'll be talking about checkout a little bit more, but just, just so you guys have this tip is that I set up a follow-up appointment if I can. With Amy, I wanted to, but that party was kind of crazy at once at the end of the checkout session. So I knew that I would be following up with her the next day and I just texted her to see if we could set up the time to talk. But it's really important because I knew Amy was interested already in the business and I already knew for sure I wanted her on my team. So I was like super bummed when she left before we got to have more of a conversation, but I was like, that's okay, I'll, uh, I'll reach out to her. So, um, but at the party, if you see someone interested in the business, this is what I've found. If I start asking them, like, tell me a little bit more about your interest or what questions you have, I don't know if it's me or it's the people I'm talking to or what it is, but they don't seem to want to open up about a lot of questions and different things at the party, maybe in front of their friends. And I'm even thinking from the perspective that there could be some people who really need the money and they might not be comfortable really like saying, I really need the money to where maybe the whole group of the party is hearing. I don't know, I'm reading between the lines, but what I have found to be very successful and I'm, do, I'm, I'm a pretty strong recruiter in the company, so something I'm doing is right, is just setting a follow-up appointment and really saying like, I noticed that you had some interest in the business opportunity. I would love to give you a little bit of information to take home and then um, would you be available to talk like in the next couple of days? Could we make an appointment that I could give you a quick call? And, and that way you can kind of look this information over and then I could answer any questions you have and talk to you a little bit more about it. So um, that's what I do. And I have found huge, huge, huge success in that because then you get to have a meaningful conversation one-on-one -on -one with that person and they feel very comfortable in their own home talking to you. They also have set aside a little bit of time to talk to you because they're expecting your phone call because you set up an appointment. Um, so I just feel like it's just a win, win, win in that situation. And it's not going to be for everybody. I mean, it's not like every time I make a follow-up appointment, every single person signs up in the business, but the percentage has gone way up with that kind of approach. And it does free you a little bit of feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm in a panic at the checkout station. Someone's interested in the business and I have to have every correct question that I'm going to ask so that I can nail this down. It's like, that's too much at a party. So I, I just do a follow-up appointment for recruiting. Okay. And then number 11 is it, it is more fun with friends in this business. And I mean, we're already all friends, but it's actually super motivating to have people on your team. So if you have someone, you know, that you, jo that's, that joined your team in the business and they're like um, texting you cause they're so excited. They just had their first party and somebody booked a party and 
oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I just have some questions I need to ask you about how to get that going. But I'm really, you know, it, it's just the most motivating thing ever to have a team. And then sometimes when you're like a little sluggish in your business because life's crazy and you haven't gotten to that, you get like a phone call or a text from your team member and it's really awesome. It really keeps you motivated and, and keeps you going. So don't be afraid to recruit even if you don't think you have the whole business figured out because that's why I'm here. So I can help you train your people. We have a lot of resources. We have so many resources that people like don't even know where to start right now, but we're trying to streamline that a little bit more for everybody. So honestly, between Sonara's website, our rookie calls, you know, on our rookie Facebook page, I'm trying to be a lot more interactive on our team awesome page. So make sure, um, make sure all your team members are added to that. I think Karen, there was a couple that I tried to tag in our event that weren't popping up. So that's why I texted you last night to just make sure they're added to the team awesome page. Um, yes. I got them in there. Awesome. So <clears throat> I'm just, I'm just trying to be really, really interactive on that team awesome page now more than ever, because I have so many excited team members, you know, our team has grown or organized. It's actually not all, it's our whole, my whole organization. So it's three, <clears throat> three team leaders <clears throat> under me, all of your teams plus, plus my team. So it's really fun because now there's enough people on there to like, keep it going. You know what I mean? Like people are asking questions or being excited or sharing ideas and that type of stuff. So stay engaged with that. Um, and then just know that I'm here to help you with with your new team members. So don't be afraid at all to say, this is awesome. I thought of you because would you be interested in learning more? If you, if you want to have a three-way call to, um, you know, for recruiting, fine. Like let's set up a three-way call so I can help answer the questions and you can just listen so that you might know, you know, after a few three-way calls, you might feel really comfortable having that conversation with somebody by yourself. But I'm totally here for that. Even if you're not available at the same time, they're available and we're struggling to make that time, you know, like a three-way call time for all three of us. I can talk to them for you. I'm happy to do that. You know what I mean? And just answer any questions they have, um, all of that. So another thing, uh, well, number, so, so, and then you guys can be learning together. That's something you could say, like if you have a good friend or somebody like, Hey, we could do this t business together and we could actually learn together. It'll be super fun. And we could even schedule like your training calls at the same times if you want so that we're, um, you know, it's kind of fun because she might ask a different question than you ask. And so you're both learning all these things at the same time. Um, so yeah. And number 12 was just don't wait to recruit because we're here to help you train people. I guess I, obviously I'm the one that wrote this list because I keep saying the next tip before I look at my sheet. Um, there was something else, darn it. I was going to say, oh, that smells good. Mom. Well, I might think of it again, but anyways, um, yeah. So, so don't wait. Um, that's how you're going to you know, get to team leaders as fast as possible is getting team members because their volume adds to your volume. And you obviously need two team members doing at least the 350 each per month um, in order to be a team leader. So questions on recruiting. Oh, that's cute. Good tips, Yota. Good tips. Okay, okay good. Um, I'm glad that you liked them. Um, Dang it, I thought of something and I, and I went on to the next one and didn't say it. I hate it when I do that. Okay, that's all right. So let's see where we're at. It's not giving me the 10 minute warning yet, which is awesome. So now we're gonna move on where everybody wants to be into activity, right? Because everybody's like, ah, get going here. <laughs> we, wanna, we wanna be in the action phase. So um, the, the topics are gonna be kind of how to fill your calendar, host coaching, the demo um, of a tasting party and a workshop, and then the checkout process. Um, and some, some new thing that Mandy's doing that I'm gonna just share with you guys, and you guys can decide what works best for you, but she's doing kind of a meal planning consultation at her parties, and I like the sound of that. It sounds really fancy and um, funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds cool. Like, ooh, I should be paying for this, you know, type of thing. So, so I think it'll be a neat thing. Um, the thing that I want to talk about first with filling your calendar is the most important first thing that you can do is look at your calendar and fill in the things that you cannot or will not change because you're going to have, if you have a work schedule or you, your kids have activities um, or maybe you have date night or church or something like that, you need to put those things on the calendar first because you still need to put 
what's most important first in your life, even though while she is a lot of fun, it's kind of like a drug, a little bit addicting. Um, but you want to, you want to make sure that you're, you know, keeping your priorities straight and, and giving your family the adequate time and all of that. So then you can look at, and it's a really easy way to time block because then you're looking at your calendar and you're seeing the pockets of time that you have available period. Like those are what's available. Now you need to plug in the action steps that you need to be doing in order to um, be growing your business and moving forward. So um, one, let me see her if this is okay. Um, the most important thing to do is to be making connections every single day. Okay. So that in the beginning is going to be reaching out to people probably a lot with the words I thought of you because, because you know, you don't have, you haven't done parties yet to be able to follow up with if you're brand new. So you're starting out with just from scratch, your big, um, your, uh, your circles of people. So we have, I think everybody has seen this. I don't know if I have a copyright here or not, but the circles of influence. Okay. Here it is. The circles of influence um, sheet. Has everybody seen this? Yes. Okay. So that's in module one of Sonara's training with Sonara website uh, or module two, actually. Um, mm -hmm. So this is, you know, when you're talking about the different circles of people, this is really important that you're really thinking of those different circles and you're not here. I'll show you, Diana. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's really awesome because it gives you some ideas for different categories of people. Um, you can print this off of the MRC. You can just type in circles of influence um, in the search bar, or you can go to Sonara's training website and um, training with Sonara.com. The click on getting started and the password is plus, um, in lowercase letters and you can print it off. I think it's in module two on Sonara's training website, but the most important thing is to be reaching out me, to different circles of people. So you don't want to just only spend your time making contacts of your family or only spending time making contacts of, you know, just one category. You want to do some coworkers. You want to do family, friends, neighbors, um, people you're acquainted with because of your kids' sports, you know, all these different things, and really be reaching out to those different circles. That's how you're going to get out of your inner circle as fast as possible and, and then start spreading, um, you know, recruiting and getting bookings outside of your circle. So this is going to be a repeat for some of you guys. If you've been on our um, rookie call, number one, we talk about this, but I love this sheet. Okay, we, I call it the post-it note document, but success out of the starting gate or, you know, whatever. So this came from um, Mandy O'Halloran, my director, her and Jacqueline put this together. But Mandy told me a long time ago when I was first getting started, just take eight post-it notes and stick them in your house. And then as you book a party, you're filling in one of those post-it notes. But your goal is to just be filling up eight post-it notes in the next mm -hmm. six to eight weeks. So you've got, you know, all those parties on your books. So you start with your calendar, picking out your pockets of time. Um, like Amy and I talked about, she said, well, I don't really care which days I do the parties. I'm pretty available. Um, you know, well then maybe you just start reaching out to people and as you fill in two per week, then you just move on to the next week, you know, and you're just offering whatever, whatever days, you know, are good for that person, I guess, if you're super flexible with your time. Um, so the first two parties that you're going to want to work on booking are two parties in your inner circle. Okay. So think about, um, and even if your calendar, even if you've been doing this business for a while and your calendar isn't as full as you would like it to be, I still go back to this idea if I need to, you know, to restock my calendar basically. So the, the two first parties in your inner circle would be like your go-to people, like people, you know, will just, they would just have a party if you were selling underwater basket weaving lessons because they love you, you know, so they would just, they would just do that for you. Um, so those are your first two bookings could be your, your mom, your best friend, your sister, your, you know, whatever. The second two bookings that you want to work on are two people from your outer circle. So these are the people that you're really going to be thinking about. I thought of you because when you're calling them, because they're going to be, um, you know, maybe somebody with a dietary restriction, maybe someone with that's just super, super busy. You know, they're just running every direction for sports or um, maybe someone in really involved in health and fitness, you know, different reasons why wild tree would really resonate with that particular person. Um, so those are going to be your second two bookings with your outer circle. 
And then your third two bookings <clears throat> are going to be, um, and you guys can alter this. It's your own business. This is just a, a formula that works really well. So your third two bookings are going to be your tasting or launch parties. They work really well if you give two options in the same week because people have, you know, two different options of dates to come. Sometimes you get a really popular day and the other day's a flop, but that's okay. At least you had the two options out there. Um, but schedule your own two launch parties at your house. And you and we recommend doing tasting parties for those. Um, they might actually come before these other bookings that you're you're getting on your calendar of your inner and outer circle, but just um, just know that you're working on bookings at the same time as working to to invite to your launch party. Because what happened with me is that I focused so much on my double launches and was just inviting to those. And I did have a really amazing turnout, 21 people on Tuesday night, 12 people on Sunday afternoon, which was huge. I mean, my 21 people is still my biggest party to date. That was my very first wild tree party. But guess what happened? I didn't do anything but focus on inviting to those. So I joined in April. My first month in my business didn't really truly take place until May. I mean, I sold like $400 in April and the rest was all in May. So then it just felt like it put me a month behind on getting that ball rolling towards, you know, promoting to team leader because I was determined to promote to team leader right out of the gates too. But I was starting in, in April and May is really more difficult time because I promoted in June and July and those are two not the easiest months to promote um, in the summertime. The summertime attendance can be a little bit slower um, as a general rule, just because people are vacationing and different things. But um, anyway, so I recommend to get on the ball with, call people up and say, hey, um, you know, I just joined this. I don't know, I can't get those words stuck in my, like to stay in my, in my mouth to say, organic meal solutions company. I love that, I just think it sounds really cool. I just, um, you know, I, I joined this awesome organic meal solutions company. And I, um, to your close people, would you totally, would you host a party for me? I'm working really hard to get eight parties on my books in the next, you know, um, like month or two or, or like four to six weeks or however, whatever your time frame is that you're trying to do it. Um, and they're just probably going to help you because they love you. Then you're going to call, you're going to, you're going to reach out, but okay. Backing up. If they say, I totally will host for you, but like, I'm insane and I don't have, I just can't do it until January. You might hear that from some people, okay? Then you just say, okay, no problem. I'm actually, I'm hosting um, a couple of parties at my house. Would you come and just taste and check it out? I have a party on this date and this date. Would one of those dates work for you? So if you're starting with approaching them about booking their own party, and then if they can't, then you invite them to your party. That works out a little bit better because you're much better off to get a booking than to get that extra body at your party. You know what I mean? If you have that option. Um, and then what you do from your two tasting parties is, um, just so you guys know, we're getting towards the end of this time segment. So we'll log off and back on, but I think I can say the rest of this really quick from your two launch parties, tasting parties, you're going to schedule your own personal freezer meal workshop two to three weeks later. So that if people want to order a kit at your tasting party and come back and make meals at your house, that would be one option for them. They would also have the option to buy a kit and have it shipped to their own house, put the meals together on their own, or they would have an option to book a party from your party and host their own workshop. But it's nice to give them the option to come back to your house to make meals if that's going to be the best fit for them. And then the last two post-it notes on there, which I think added up to nine actually, is just going to be bookings from your parties, okay? So um, we're going to talk next about host coaching to get your attendance up. So I'm going to, let's just log off and then we'll log back on um, for host coaching. And if you guys need to go to the bathroom or whatever, take five minutes and then I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay. Okay. She's good. Oh, take a break. Sorry. Oh, she you're good. Log off. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>